So I've been using server actions in Next.js for a couple of months now, and I just randomly stumbled across a feature of server actions that I had no idea existed. And it's actually listed on the page right here, but I bet you glossed over it just like I did. So let's look at a quick example of server actions in Next.js, and I'll show you the additional way that you can use this that you may not have expected. So this is a project called uh, Deals for Devs, which is a community-led project. If you're interested in participating in it, you can join Discord and learnbuildteach.com, send me a DM, and you can participate. Uh, but what we want to do here is allow people to sign up to get notifications for deals in different categories, so courses, eBooks, etc. So I already have my email registered. It'll tell me this email exists, etc. And the way this works is this actually submits this form to a server action in the back end. And if we go and look at the code, we have a regular form and then we define our action kind of in line in here. And what's interesting is inside of this action, we do this mix of front end and server side code. And this is one of the things that people like really kind of dislike or are hesitant about because it mixes this. So the first thing we do is we take that form data and we just pass it to the subscribe endpoint. Subscribe endpoint is defined in the actions folder. It uses use server and then it grabs the email, it parses it with Zod. And then what we do is create that new subscriber into our Zeta database. So if I just show you really quickly inside of our dev branch of the database, here's some of the people that are working on this and you can see that they're either subscribed or unsubscribed. So you create the record first in the database and then we'll go back and update uh, to subscribe and unsubscribe. We need to make sure that this is all uppercase or so we have a issue to fix that. So this calls create subscriber. It uses our Zeta client, which is our database, which runs Postgres behind the scenes. And it creates that uh, subscriber. And then we create the validation link and we return errors as a string if there are any. Now we have some updates to do here, uh, but we can then get back that data or error and then check to see what happens. So if there's an error, use a toast to actually show that. That's what we just saw with my email that already existed. If it didn't send a token for some reason, which it should at this point, you can do a toast. And then we can do some JavaScripty stuff. We can reference the form and we can reset the form. And then we can also redirect the user to the confirmation uh, link where they're going to go next. And so this is probably what you would expect with server actions is you have this inside of a form. And I always thought that server actions were specifically made to handle form submissions. So the only place that you could use this is inside of a form where you define this action property. And if we go back to the Next.js documentation, there's this super hidden aspect of this, which is you don't have to just do this inside of a form. And so there's a lot of bullet points inside of here. And so probably what you do like me is you read this first. All right, so you can invoke this action attribute on a form element. Uh, it supports progressive enhancement by default. This is really cool. So if JavaScript is disabled, it will, it'll do the full server involvement without doing like the fetch request from the front end. Um, it has a couple different key points in here and I kind of stopped reading after this, but if you look down at this next one, it says the server actions are not limited to just forms and can be evoked from event handlers, use effect, third party libraries and other form elements like a button. What, how, and it may just be me, but how is this not a bigger focus for server actions? Like the only thing that I've seen people talk about server actions is handling form submissions, but you're telling me that we can have a button that calls a backend piece of code and we just reference it as if it's a click handler. Like we just define a function inside of an action and it take cakes and it takes care of the rest. Are you thinking about like what all goes into that? So from the front end, you click a button and you just say, call this backend function. Those two things are running front end and back end. So what Next.js is doing behind the scenes for server actions here is it specifically making a fetch request to the back end, running the backend code on the server, responding back to the front end and letting you go about your business. That's wild. That's absolutely wild to me. There's been a couple of tools that were meant to solve problems like this that allowed you to write code and call back in code just as if it was a regular function. And those are super cool. But now this is something that's just baked into, and I don't know specifically, is that just how server actions in React work? Or is this Next.js like layering on top of this? I don't know. But the fact that you can call an action from a button and not just or these other things and not just from a form is wild to me. So I think about things like, uh, let's say you want to do a blog post where you have an incrementer for thumbs up or whatever, right? Like we click on the thumbs up and it uh, should increment that thing. Typically, what we would do is we would write a click handler. We would write an API 
uh, endpoint that says like update or whatever, like increment click for this blog post or whatever. And we'd have the click handler in the front end. You would write your own fetch request to the back end. You'd have it in a try catch. You'd handle errors. You do all these things. And you'd have to just, it's just boilerplate code to make that request to the back end. But you're saying now, like we can just use a function and just tell it to run on the server as an action and Next.js will take care of the rest. That's so wild to me. And I had no idea. And I feel like this is something that people should know more about. I feel like I feel like maybe this will catch on. I just feel like it hasn't. Maybe we'll see more and more examples of this going forward, but it's something I absolutely didn't know. And I think I I think about how many different examples of this this could apply to. So many, so many different use cases for this. So this is something I'm really excited about. I'm wondering, is that something that did you already know that? Are you using it that way? And if you have any cool examples of how you're using server actions without it being through a forms mission, I would love to know because I'm like fascinated that this is a thing and the magic and the mystery that goes into solving this problem for us. So anyway, I hope that gives you a little bit uh, more insight into how you can better use server actions. I'm going to be creating more content on server actions like tips uh, that you may not have additional tips you may not have known uh, some stumbling blocks or like rookie mistakes with uh, server actions as well. So if you have any of those that you'd like to share and see covered, uh, let me know in the comments below as well. And then lastly, I just want to share, if you're interested in following along with any of the things that I'm doing and kind of building, uh, you can subscribe to my newsletter. So at jameshuquick.com, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I'll send out weekly updates on what I'm working on. A big part of this is working on the project like Deals for Does that's community-oriented, community-led. So if you're interested in joining, you can join learnbuildteach.com, Discord, send me a DM, and we can bring you in to participate and uh and write some fun code but anyway hope you enjoyed the video i hope this helps you understand a little bit more about server actions and i'll catch you later